motivational speaker, disability and queer activist Spencer West is known worldwide for his message of how to find opportunities in every challenge. And when the pandemic hit and put a pause on that, he turned to TikTok to spread his powerful message to his 4.3 million followers. Have a look. I was told that I would never sit up, walk, or be a functioning member of society. Part of the privilege of my disability is that I've been living on my own independently since I was 18. I cook, I clean, I drive a car, I'm a motivational speaker, and a few years ago I even climbed Mount Kilimanjaro with my two best friends. We'll talk about that later. Functioning, functioning, functioning. So... <laughs> Just because somebody tells you something is true doesn't mean you have to believe it. I love that line. So today, Spencer's here. We're going to talk to him about how to be a good ally to those with disabilities. Welcome in person to the show, Spencer. We talked last time during pandemic. Yes. I mean, you're in your kitchen studio, which was great, <laughs> but I really like having you here in our studio. Likewise. Thanks for having me back. It's so nice to see you. Um, let's talk more about your message and start with understanding. First of all, let's go to the basics. What is true allyship? Yeah, I think when we hear allyship, we think of the big things like donating and protesting and all of those things, which are important. Yeah. But for me, I think true allyship starts in your home. It starts if you're a caregiver for kids in your life, what are you teaching them about disability? And then when you're out in the community, if you're going to your favorite coffee shop or store and you notice there's stairs, are you asking, why are there mm. stairs here? Can we put a ramp in? Is there an accessible washroom? I think allyship really starts in our own community and, and in our own home. And not just for families with people with disabilities in their lives, but for everybody. Exactly, exactly, for everyone. Um, inclusion, as you say, always likes to say, starts early. Kids can play a big role in helping their peers with disabilities feel welcome and valued. You've talked about being bullied as a child. So how do we teach kids to interact with people people with disabilities? I think the best thing, I see a lot of, you know, kids, when I'm out in the community, they, they point and ask questions. And I see a lot of parents scold them. Hmm. Like, that's, that's not appropriate, don't do that. And I think what that does is it builds fear and shame around someone with a disability. Instead, what I would love is for people to explain what they're seeing. Like, you, you navigate the world with your legs, and he navigates the world with a wheelchair. There's not just one way mm. for people to navigate the world. And so changing that language, I think, takes away the shame and the fear and allows kids to understand. And again, have understanding as a parent so you can do that explanation. Exactly. Oh, I love that. You say not all disabled people want to be your educator. We hear this a lot from various groups about the onus not being on them. Can you explain that more? Yeah, I think that the most important thing to remember is if you're seeing someone in the community that you don't know or have a personal relationship with and you're asking them about their disability, oftentimes you're asking them to relive trauma in mm. front of you. And so in a space like we are today, I'm happy to answer these questions. But when I'm buying groceries, I don't always want to talk about where my legs are. And I think it's important for, in all things in life, to ask for consent first. If you do want to ask someone, because some people may have the capacity to do so. So you can say, do you mind if I ask you some questions about your disability? then that gives them the opportunity to respond or not. And I want to pick up on that, the word disability. Yeah. This is a word you like. Yeah. You know, we have outdated terms like handicapped and special needs and differently yeah. abled. And in the disability community, most of us really are proud to have a disability, are proud to use that word. And we usually say disabled and non-disabled because disability is the one marginalized group that almost everyone will um, be a part of at some point in their lives or when you're aging. So statistically... You're gonna you're gonna experience it at some point. So yeah. disabled or non-disabled, it's it's not a it's not a negative word. Thank you for that clarity. Yeah. Um, what is the correct ed etiquette when it comes to mobility devices? And this is important for Canadians because Canadians, I don't think, intentionally ever want to be rude, and so sometimes they just avoid altogether. Absolutely. Well, the thing to remember about mobility devices is, oftentimes, disabled folks view them as an extension of their body. Mm -hmm. So by touching their mobility device, you're also touching their physical body. And so for me, you shouldn't just touch them at all, number one. But if you need to, once again, asking for consent is super important. Respect. Always yeah. lead with respect. Exactly. Uh, Spencer, thank you so much for being with us today. It was My great pleasure. to have you here. I Likewise. always enjoy our chats on and off camera. Likewise. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here. Or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.